In this video, I'm going to show you how you can sync any inquiries or messages you receive through your Elementor form using a third party software and how you can sync them all into Google Sheets. Stay tuned. So if you have been receiving, you know, any contact form submits or anything like that from your website from Elementor, then the chances are you're going to want to store them somewhere. And yes, you can download plugins like Elementor database and stuff like that. But sometimes you will want to sync them into Google Sheets for an additional backup or if you've actually got Google Sheets connected to a CRM software. So there's a really easy and simple way to do this and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the third party software we're going to be using is called Zapier. I am in no way affiliated with them. Um, they're just an insanely amazing piece of software um, with a really easy to use interface and really about to describe them in one word. It's just going to be awesome. Good job Zapier. So uh, what we're going to do, I've already got, I personally got into an account and uh, what this does is got it's created lots of little zaps, that's what they call it, Zapier zaps. And what they do is it's like little pre-done for you stuff that allows you to connect with all sorts of different software. So for example, an Elementor form to Google Sheets or um, a Facebook post to LinkedIn. Okay, so it allows you to do all sorts of automation and things that you don't want to be spending your life doing manually. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and log into Zapier just so you can quickly see the interface. So here I am in Zapier and what you can see is all the list of all these zaps and all these integrations that uh, they allow you to connect wherever you want to do. We've got WordPress and you know Google Sheets and all of that. Now what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be um, creating a webhook in Zapier and then we're going to use that webhook and pull it into Elementor's form. Now, I do want to let you know that this can actually work with most uh, WordPress forms or any forms as long as they've got um, a webhook uh, box where you can input it. Um, so, yeah, the Zapier is like the really the main guys to go to. So first things first, let's go ahead into Elementor, get our form up and running and um, see what I'm talking about. So. Here I'm in the WordPress dashboard. You can see I've got Elementor and Elementor Pro. If you don't have Elementor Pro, make sure you use my link in the description um, because that's how I make a living. So support the channel, support me, and um, yeah. So here we are. So let's go ahead into pages and uh, I'm just gonna add a new one. And I'm going to head and just call it form Zapier and remember you don't actually need to name it anything like this because um, we're only putting the form into the page uh, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and type form and just drag this in like so now I'm just going to sh I'm showing you a very simple way to do it so I'm not really going to design the form or anything like that if you would like me to design the form please leave a comment below and I'll get some cool funky uh, different designed forms um, videos done for you uh, so I'm just going to move my camera to the right here and what you can see is actions after submit tab on the left and now you can see add an action so if you click on this you can actually see how many integrations uh, Elementor allows you to do. So ConvertKit, MailerLite, Slack, Discord, uh, MailChimp, you know, all of these things. But we're gonna go ahead and click Webhook, okay? And now when you click that, you can see a uh, tab here called Webhook and you can see um, we now have an address that we can input into uh, Zapier, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and update this just so we don't lose anything. And let's go to Zapier and build a zap. So once we're in Zapier, we want to click the make a zap button. And here, the first thing that we want to do is 
uh, type in webhook, okay? And you can see webhooks by Zapier. Go ahead and click that and then choose trigger event. We wanna uh, leave this as it is. And here, do we want to catch hook or retrieve poll? And we're gonna go with catch a hook. So now what's what that basically means is every single time a new inquiry on, let's say your website's been made, uh, the webhook's gonna detect that and boom, it's going to, Zapier's gonna do its techie things. So let's go ahead and press continue. And now you can see our custom webhook URL is this. So let's go ahead and copy this and we don't need to touch this stuff here, okay? Um, let's click on this and then click webhook and paste that in like so. We're going to update the page. And now let's go ahead and view the page. Okay, so we've got uh, the form there, the webhook should be in because we updated it, but we're gonna test that out in a minute. Let's go back to Zapier and click continue. Okay, so now if we do test and review, this isn't gonna come back with anything because uh, we've not actually inputted the form. So let's go ahead and input something into the form Okay, so I've inputted the information. Let's go ahead and press send and see what happens. Okay, so that's now been sent. Let's go back to Zapier and see if this is going to pick anything up. I'm just gonna go ahead and press cancel and then test and review. And instantly you saw before it was trying to load, but there was nothing to load. And now you can see hook A pulled in a minute. And if we click on the drop down, you will actually be able to see the page URL was form Zapier. That's what we named the page. Um, and you can see the date, the message and the email, and it will it will show all the fields you have in your form. So now, yeah, I'm happy with that. So let's click done editing. And now that was at bit one. So what do we want to happen now? So we've sorted out WordPress. So where do we want this information to be stored? Well, I said at the beginning of the video, it's going to go into Google Sheets. So let's go ahead and do that. So where it says number two, do this, we're gonna click on that. And we're gonna type in Google Sheets, just like so, and click on that. So is where it says choose action event. Let's go ahead and click choose action event. And we've got a choice. You can either do create worksheet, create spreadsheet row, update spreadsheet row and what we're going to do is we are going to create a new row in a specific spreadsheet and just so you know what that is if we head over to let's say my google sheets document i'm going to go ahead and click blank i'm going to call this youtube form um youtube form example okay and then we're going to now what you want to do in your Google Sheets document is actually title um, all the columns. So if you've got, uh, you know, first name, because we're going to have to map where you want this information to go. So first name, uh, email, um, date and URL. OK, so now that we have all of that, I'm just going to put that in bold and boom. So that's done there. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to Zapier and now continue. Okay, so we're gonna have to sign into your Google Sheets account. Okay, so once you click the sign in button, you will then see this little uh, pop-up box. And what you wanna do is just press allow. And this is basically allowing Zapier access to what it needs access to. And yeah, so this is one of my um, dummy accounts. And if we go ahead and press continue, now you can see you've got these options. So you've got drive, spreadsheet, worksheet. So you don't need to touch the drive, but let's go ahead and click on spreadsheet. And it's now uh, looking for your spreadsheets in that account. And I'm going to select the YouTube form example and then worksheet. So the worksheet, and I'm sure you already know this, but just in case is this little thing at the bottom. So if you created another one, it'll be sheet one, sheet two, or whatever you name them. And then this way you don't need to have a million and one uh, separate spreadsheets in Google Sheets. All you really need to do is have lots of um, spreadsheets, uh, lots of uh, separate sheets within the one. Uh, sheet. So let's go back to Zapier and we're just going to do sheet one because that's where we want it. And now because we've connected that sheet and we've put in the columns, we can now sync the relevant information where we want it. So the first name is going to be name, the email is going to be email and the date will be this and the URL is 
this here. Okay, very simple, very easy. And then we go ahead and press continue. And now what you can see is this little information, which is kind of like a uh, review information. Let's go ahead and do test and review. And let's go to Google Sheets. And there you go. You can see you've got all the information. And if this is in bold, just make this one in bold, uh, just unbold it. And then all the rest is also going to be on bold as well. Finally, uh, to finish this off and make it all live and ready to be used within your website, all you've got to do is do done editing and then turn the zap on. And then there you go, your zap's done. So if we go back to setup, uh, and you, if you, the top left here, you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it YouTube example and then press enter. And now that's named properly. And if I go back here, you can see I've got YouTube example. And if you click on this little drop down, you can see task history. And because um, nothing's actually been submitted, uh, it's not going to log anything. But you can also have the auto replay option. So if there's a fault or some sort of glitch, it will keep trying to replay it so you don't really lose out on a lot of data. Um, but this is a very reliable piece of software. It's a really easy way to do it. And sometimes when you use free plugins to help with the webhooks, or if you're not really, you don't really know what webhooks are and you're just kind of trying to achieve stuff, um, sometimes the a little bit of the additional cost for these sorts of softwares is going to save a mountain of time and a mountain of web developer fees or unnecessary fees when it really is, as you've just seen, so simple and um, takes no longer than 10, 15 minutes. In fact, once you do it once, you'll probably be able to do it within five minutes. Um, it's just I've been explaining everything. Uh, so thanks for watching and 